Sugar is everywhere. It's in your coffee, your favorite desserts, and even in foods you wouldn't expect. But have you ever wondered how sugar is actually made? How do we go from tall green stalks in a field or a root vegetable in the ground to those perfect sparkling white crystals in your kitchen? Well, today we're taking you behind the scenes to see exactly how sugar is made from farm to factory. And trust me, the process is just as fascinating as it is sweet. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more amazing deep dives into the everyday things we often take for granted. Sugar has been a part of human civilization for thousands of years. It all started with sugarcane, which was first domesticated over 10,000 years ago in New Guinea before spreading to India, China, and the Middle East. But back then, sugar wasn't something you sprinkled on your cereal. It was so rare and valuable that it was stored in vaults like gold. Fast forward to the 8th and 9th centuries, and Arab traders introduced sugar to the Western world, bringing both the plant and the knowledge of its cultivation to Sicily and Spain. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s that sugar production became efficient enough to make it widely available to everyone. And today, the sugar industry is worth a staggering $67 billion worldwide. So, how does it all work? Let's start at the very beginning. Sugar comes from two main sources, sugarcane and sugar beets. Sugarcane grows in tropical and subtropical climates, reaching full maturity in 12 to 16 months. When it's ready, massive mechanized harvesters cut it down, chop it into small pieces called billets, and load it onto trucks for transport. Time is crucial. Once cut, sugarcane starts to deteriorate quickly, so it has to reach the factory fast. Sugar beets, on the other hand, grow in cooler, temperate regions and are harvested in the fall and winter. A specialized rotor beater removes their leafy tops, leaving the beets behind in the soil, where they're pulled up by machines and sent straight to processing facilities. Both sugarcane and sugar beets may look completely different, but once they reach the factory, they go through a surprisingly similar transformation. First, the raw materials need to be thoroughly cleaned. Sugarcane is washed with powerful water jets, while sugar beets are tumbled in massive rotating drums to remove dirt and debris. Then comes the fun part, extracting the sweet juice. For sugarcane, this happens by crushing it through a series of giant rollers, squeezing out every last drop of liquid. The leftover fibrous material, called bagasse, isn't wasted. It's actually burned as fuel to help power the factory. Sugar beets go through a slightly different process. Instead of being crushed, they're sliced into thin strips called cassettes and soaked in hot water tanks. The heat helps break down the plant's cells, releasing the sugar-rich juice. At this stage, the juice doesn't look or taste like the sugar you know. It's dark, murky, and full of impurities. But that's about to change. To transform this raw juice into pure sugar, it needs to go through a series of purification steps. First, the juice is filtered and treated with sulfur dioxide gas, which helps remove unwanted colors and bacteria. Then, it goes through a process called alkalization, where calcium hydroxide, also known as milk of lime, is added. This neutralizes the juice's acidity and causes non-sugar components to separate out as sludge. Fun fact, that sludge isn't wasted. It's actually used as fertilizer in sugar fields. Once purified, the juice is boiled in massive vacuum evaporators, slowly removing water and concentrating its sugar content. By the end of this process, it has gone from just 15% sugar to a thick syrup with 60% sugar. Pretty cool, right? If you're enjoying this deep dive, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on more behind the scenes looks at how everyday products are made. Now that we have a thick sugary syrup, it's time to turn it into actual sugar crystals. This happens inside a giant vacuum pan, where the syrup is heated until it becomes super saturated. At the perfect moment, 
Tiny sucrose crystals suspended in alcohol, called seed crystals, are introduced into the syrup. These act as a foundation, allowing larger sugar crystals to grow around them. As the syrup thickens, it turns into a dense mixture of sugar crystals and liquid called masacuit. This mixture is slowly stirred and cooled inside giant crystallizers, encouraging even more crystal growth. But we're not done yet. There's still one more big step before we get that perfect granulated sugar. To separate the sugar from the remaining liquid, the massacute is spun at incredible speeds, sometimes up to 2,800 revolutions per minute, inside perforated metal baskets. The force pushes the molasses outward, leaving behind pure sugar crystals. At this stage, the crystals are still slightly damp, so they're rinsed with spring water to remove any leftover syrup. The molasses is collected and used for other food products, while the sugar moves on to its final transformation. The wet sugar crystals are sent through massive hot air dryers, where warm currents tumble them, gradually reducing their moisture content to an astonishing 0.02%, the gold standard for table sugar. This step is crucial, ensuring the sugar remains dry, free-flowing, and ready for storage. Once perfectly dried, the crystals travel across vibrating screens, where they are carefully sorted by size. The finest grains become powdered sugar, perfect for dusting pastries. Medium-sized crystals are transformed into the granulated sugar that sweetens your coffee and tea. And the coarser, golden-hued crystals? They're used in specialty baking and raw sugar products, adding depth and crunch to gourmet recipes. From there, the sugar is transported to giant silos, where it awaits its final journey, packaging. Industrial machines measure precise portions, filling everything from tiny kitchen-friendly packets to bulk-sized sacks for bakeries and food manufacturers. Sealed, stacked, and shipped, this sugar is finally ready to hit store shelves and sweeten the world. And just like that, the incredible journey from farm to factory is complete. The next time you sprinkle sugar into your morning coffee, bake a birthday cake, or indulge in your favorite dessert, you'll know just how much effort and expertise went into creating those perfect glistening crystals. If you found this process fascinating, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss another deep dive into the everyday products we often take for granted. And if you're curious about how other kitchen essentials are made, check out one of these videos on your screen right now. There's a whole world of food production waiting to be explored. Thanks for watching, and as always, Stay curious, stay sweet, and we'll see you next time. Instant coffee has been around since 1890 and has quickly become an indispensable part of everyday life. It is not just a symbolic beverage, but also represents the perfect combination of modern technology and traditional expertise in food production. From busy mornings to late night work sessions, Instant coffee has become a familiar companion, offering both convenience and bold flavor. Leading the revolution in instant coffee is Nescafe by Nestle, producing an astounding 1 billion cups of coffee daily. To achieve this scale, Nestle collaborates with over 100,000 farmers from renowned coffee-growing countries such as Brazil and Vietnam, who supply more than 13 million bags of coffee beans annually to 24 advanced factories worldwide. Each step in the journey of turning ripe coffee cherries into a delicious cup of instant coffee is a masterpiece of meticulousness and dedication. Kit Kat, the crispy chocolatey treat with a familiar delightful flavor, has captured the hearts of millions worldwide. Beneath its iconic red wrapper lies a fascinating and meticulous production process. Have you ever wondered what makes Kit Kat so irresistibly enticing? Today, join us on a journey through one of the world's largest chocolate factories, where over 8 million bars are crafted daily. This sweet adventure is sure to amaze and delight. 
Subscribe to our channel to discover more behind the scenes secrets of your favorite treats. Have you ever wondered how tiny cacao beans from tropical rainforests transform into the sweet chocolate bars we all love? This journey is not just a production process, but also a captivating story spanning thousands of years, from the rituals of the Maya to the modern technology of today. Join Process Vibes as we uncover the secrets behind this sweet treat. You'll be amazed at what chocolate has gone through to reach your hands. How it's made, 